Well, hello everyone. And um, I was wondering today, when we come to one of the greatest of mysteries of prehistory, we look at the Inca walls. Did thermal expansion play a role in the design of the Inca walls? It seems to me that a knob, a knob on an Inca wall, these famous knobs sticking out, which were supposedly for raising and lifting stones, despite the fact that with angles like this or this or this, these stones could not have been raised and lifted together, uh, could be the egress of material, stone welding material produced under the high pressure of thermal expansion in terms of its egress out of the stones. Is this what happened? Is this why they're placed along the boundaries of the stones? What's going on? This is most interesting indeed. Let's take a look. Well, hello everyone. Speaking as a chemist, there is endless evidence to me of chemistry, of the ancient alchemy, of the philosopher's stones at the Inca walls. And we see paradoxes, and the paradoxes can't really be explained. Why are very small stones used as foundations instead of very large stones? Stones which are obviously not precisely fitted together, but roughly more or less fitted together. And why are suddenly large stones seen above them in the Inca walls? Why are there always strange shapes like squares and oblongs and other strange shapes seen in the Inca walls and various lines that we can't quite see? Why are things like this evident in the Inca walls? The nubs. How do we explain the nubs? Can they be explained by thermal expansion or contraction of stone welding material which has been injected into the rocks? Because some of the nubs are sticking out, some of the nubs are actually recessed. Uh, it's as if the, the mixture which has been injected in order to cover the, pre the inside of the previous stones to weld them together has shrunk. And why is it that often we see a pillowing? So such that we see, we see maybe chisel marks or scoop marks in the edges as if part of the mixture has been cut away in order to form a pillowing effect. Is this due to an avoidance of thermal expansion which could cause the facade to crack, which I've shown in previous videos? We know that concrete expands. I'm going to read this from a website by a company called Hansen. An expansion joint or control joint is a gap which allows a concrete to expand and contract as when the temperature changes. It forms a break between the concrete and other parts of a structure to allow movement without causing stress which can lead to cracking. They should be used in large concrete slabs such as foundations and concrete driveways. All concrete will shrink slightly as it dries and when it's set will expand or contract depending on the ambient temperature. To prevent cracks from forming, concrete expansion joints should be incorporated to allow for movement, particularly in slabs with a surface area exceeding 6 metres squared. Concrete expansion joints are particularly important where there have been consecutive concrete pours and are also useful when laying concrete within an area bordered by walls or buildings and if objects such as manhole covers need to be incorporated. You can install concrete expansion joints before or after the concrete is laid. And it goes on. After the con once the concrete is set, grooves can be cut in the concrete. This will control where the concrete will crack, leaving a neat saw cut at the surface and allow joint materials to be added where required, but care must be taken to ensure the correct depth. And, and they, they give rules of thumb, such as place joints at around 30 times the slab thickness apart. So if a slab which is 100 millimeters thick, the joints should be placed three meters apart. It, does this rule dictate the size of the Inca stones? Because I think what is what is happening, and 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 when I saw this picture, it kind of blew my mind a bit because I saw I see here the outlines, the same rough outlines of the stones that we see here, and to me it looks like a crack has occurred and part of the facade has fallen off. To me, that's what it looks like. 
or part part of the mixture has come off and these stones are these stones if they're built in the same way we can see that quite clearly quite clearly indeed to me here we see uh, where a nub has been placed because the welding mixture has been injected then due to the terrific heat exerted it has expanded maybe over weeks or months or days or hours and it has formed a nub and the nubs seem to be allowing for gravity to be at the joints and why would the nubs be at the joints to weld the two stones together by gravity being just above the previous stones so I don't think we're going to see nubs right at ground level we're going to see them always on the next course of blocks and I see this as a multi-step process that that took place um, for example first we had to anneal all these stones together to make something like this and then more was added as we went but to ensure a, a good hold what if we had to then drill into the stones and then inject more mixture just to make sure which then emerged as these extrusions and this might be a multi-step process we also see evidence that um, parts of the stone were cut away um, to allow for expansion of the joints and that might be the reason for the pillowing of the stones in the first place that a bit of concrete had to be cut away to allow for future expansion or contraction otherwise this kind of thing would inevitably occur and here we see a similar thing and and, and this is pretty much how I, I think it, it must have been done it, it must be a chemical process um, as postulated by people like Davidovitz but uh, rather than uh, all geopolymer it, it's clearly a welding process of smaller stuff to me it's a welding a stone welding process of smaller stones and and one thing that me and my colleagues didn't think about so much is the thermodynamics need to be allowed for we need to allow for the fact that these these nubs can um, expand or mixture can expand and contract and there had to be room for that allowance for that perhaps they even had to drill holes in the rocks when they injected uh, material from above to allow the expansion inside to prevent cracking of the stone and we can see we can start to possibly explain the strange shapes as parts of the process added over time where a, a layer of the annealing material has been added and then it has contracted or it has expanded over time we see expansion here we see contraction there and and and, and this creates the strange shapes and the strange scoop marks that we see in these rocks um, at Sokse Khwaman, Russian, um, we saw in a, a video from on another channel that, that Russians were arguing about whether this was natural sand limestone or not um, and, and whether it was artificial and the experts themselves can't agree. Some say it's an artificial process, some say it's all natural. And if it is natural, well, how was it done? And again, here in this street in Peru, Cusco, we see the strange marks that we can't really explain unless it's a chemical process of expansion and contraction of layers of a kind of annealing cement added over time or welding mixture with, with a, a very high uh, thermodynamic range which can expand or contract and, and might even be a little bit unpredictable and dangerous. And this is one of the paradoxes that we can't really explain because people like Brian Forster say, well, these stones are the, the, the pre-Inca and these are the Inca. But then again, uh, this, is, this is very interesting. Here we see a mixture of the two. So I, I do wonder what's, what's happening here. We see a bit of volcanic pumice here. And here we see um, the, the Inca, the, the proper uh, pre-Inca stones. And there's something else I want to explain about the granaries of Egypt because 
um, when you bake, it, it would not have escaped the attention of these people that what they were doing was basically break, baking bread in stone. When you bake bread together, it looks like the, 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 uh, the, the, the pillow stone formations that they were creating in stone. So I do wonder, was bread a source of control, a source of power in Cuzco, such that uh, these people um, showed off their, their buildings as if, the, as if the stone were baked loaves, baked together? And was this a source of power? Did this mean this was the granary? This was where the Lord lived. He controlled the bread and the fields. And when we uh, look at Egypt, it is known that the, in the Middle Ages, they said, well, the, these pyramids are granaries. And no one knows why this is the case. Is it because they were once covered, possibly, in these uh, pillow stone formations at one time? Clearly, these, these nubs are part of a process, possibly a chemical process. They were left behind. Why were they left behind? Was it because the, the builders moved on and the chemical mixture slowly expanded out of the stone over time? What's going on? And back in 2017, I made a video um, about this cracked stone showing that underneath, uh, in fact, that there does appear to be um, uh, other stone. Um, which may have been put together by another concrete. Someone did visit this site and he wasn't quite sure what was going on. He suggested maybe it's one piece of stone in there, or it could be a, a multi, a multi faceted process of different types of concrete. Okay. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, yeah, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for joining me.